itself. And the second reason you can't allow it is very familiar to anyone who has children, which is if you allow it, you will encourage more of it. If you allow people to get away with things that are completely over the top and outrageous, if you allow your two-year-old to smear the contents of his diapers on the wall of your living room and you do nothing about it, if you allow your 14-year-old to light a joint at the breakfast table, if you allow your hormone-addled 15-year-old daughter to like slam the door of her bedroom and give you the finger, you're gonna get more of it. And those kids are gonna wind up in rehab. It's not good for you and it's not good for them. No. There has to be a point at which dad comes home. Yeah, that's right. Dad comes home. And he's pissed. Dad is pissed. He's not vengeful. He loves his children. Disobedient as they may be, he loves them. Because they're his children, they live in his house. But he's very disappointed in their behavior. And he's gonna have to let them know. He's gonna have to get to your room right now and think about what you did. And when dad gets home, you know what he says? You've been a bad girl. You've been a bad little girl and you're getting a vigorous spanking right now. And no, it's not gonna hurt me more than it hurts you. No, it's not. I'm not gonna lie. This is gonna hurt you a lot more than it hurts me. And you earned this. You're getting a vigorous spanking because you've been a bad girl. And it has to be this way. It has to be this way because it's true. And you're only gonna get better when you take responsibility for what you did. That's not said in the spirit of hate. It's not said in the spirit of vengeance or bigotry, far from it. It's said in the spirit of justice, which is the purest and best thing there is. And without it, things fall apart. What the heck did I just listen to? Okay, guys, before we talk about this hot mess today, I'm Anna Cox with Bayes Politics. Welcome to my channel where I bring you my politically homeless takes on politics and culture. Before we dive in today, make sure you like this video, subscribe to my channel if you have not already, and make sure you ring the notification bell so you never miss one of my episodes. So that was obviously Tucker Carlson. I think probably you all know him here, but just in case not, He's the former Fox News host that lied about the election being sold in 2020 repeatedly and knowingly on air, cost the company almost a billion dollars in a resulting lawsuit, and who is now working as a podcaster and apparently a Trump surrogate. Now, he made these remarks at a recent turning point rally for Trump, and somehow the sexual undertones of him discussing spanking a 15-year-old girl are not even the most concerning part about this. I said as much on Twitter when I first saw this clip where it becomes more and more evident every day that America is in the throes of a literacy crisis. These people cannot read. In response to me saying that this video was creepy and had overtly sexual overtones, which it does to literally any normal person listening to this, talking about hitting a 15-year-old girl, spanking her, and telling her you've been a bad, bad girl, like, that was creepy. In response to me, this yo-yo said, wow, you just sexualized parenting. You might want to seek some therapy. No, I didn't sexualize parenting because first and foremost, normal parents are not spanking their kids, particularly their daughters at the age of 15 years old. And if you are doing that, I kind of want to send somebody to your house to check on things. Secondarily, good parents aren't hitting their kids at all, okay? Sorry if you're my audience and you still do this, but like, I can't think of anything more regressive and boomer than spanking your children. The data is overwhelmingly out on this and it is harmful to kids. It's bad parenting, it's lazy parenting, and it's unacceptable in my book. Don't hit your kids. It actually is going to cause them to be violent. It's going to give them mental health issues. It's going to teach them that violence is how they handle their problems. It's awful. So no, I wasn't referring to disciplining your kids in general being wrong or sexualizing it. I was saying that spanking your kids 
is bad and spanking a 15 year old girl is never appropriate. Try to keep up. What I think is really interesting in the spanking conversation when it comes up is that a lot of people, particularly men who were spanked, are very defensive of the fact that their parents hit them. And I don't get it because I was spanked and I am unilaterally against it. I forgive my parents, but I think it was an atrocious and uneducated decision on their part. And I've said as much to them. I'm not in here defending their actions, but a certain set of people will do just that. Here's one of them. This guy said, if you got sexual undertones here, you need to get your hard drive checked. Uh, I'm not the one that is giving public speeches fantasizing about spanking a 15-year-old girl, dude. Nor am I online defending the person that did that. In response to him, a normal person said, spanking a 15-year-old is appropriate? And he said, that's an entirely different conversation than if it has sexual undertones. And I said, it's inappropriate because it has sexual overtones, you absolute walnut. And then he goes on this weird rant talking about a time when he was 15 and talked back to his dad and his dad spanked him. And he said it was rightfully done. He goes, do I need to go back and claim me too? I think you need to go back to therapy and work out why you were so rabidly defensive of your father spanking you at 15 years of age. I was so creeped out by Tucker's talk, not just because of the sexual undertones in it, but also because I really think there is a certain subset of parents that like really enjoy spanking their kids. They love talking about it. They are very proud of it. And it's always done in this manner that he's using. And to me, they enjoy it because they are ultimately abusive people. And it feels good to them because it's a permissive form of abuse where they get to pretend they're doing it out of love and for the good of their kids. You always hear them emphasize that. But really, they're just doing it because they're pissed off. They want dominance or revenge. They want control. And they have the same kind of mentality towards their political opponents. This is where you get all the like Trump is a wannabe dictator talking points. It's not that those talking points are without substance. This is the kind of thing that leads people to say that. I also thought it was so weird how at the end of the clip, he tried to like link discipline and spanking with justice. You discipline your kids in order to correct their behavior, to ensure that they act within the proper bounds of society and to basically put them on a good path for their future. But discipline does not have to be and does not need to be physical. That's why I say it's lazy. They don't want to actually do the work of truly disciplining their kids, reasoning with them, and correcting their behavior slowly over time. They want to dominate them and harm them and force them under their control in an expedient fashion. So the reason that Tucker and his camp would link justice to discipline is because in both a parental setting and in a political setting, they want people to behave exactly as they want them to behave. They don't want anybody acting outside of the bounds of where they think they should be. They essentially do want to be dictators because of that. And so they see anybody that is thwarting them in that way as doing something unjust because they are actually harming them versus just being able to recognize that sometimes people do things you don't like and it's not about you at all and it doesn't even pertain to you. I do want to point out that many people are not defending this, including people within the MAGA camp. And that's good to see because there really has to be a line, even within tribalism, where when somebody in your camp does something or says something like so bizarre, you're like, hang on, no, not with me. I don't, I don't co-sign that. The people getting upset and defensive when others like me have called out Tucker's comments as being weird and creepy, like you are so deep in your tribalistic brain, you can't even acknowledge when something is just truly outside the bounds of normalcy. I like this response to me. Somebody said, the government is my employee, not my parent. What a weird rant. Another person said, I'm MAGA and love Tucker, but this was a weird analogy to say the least. This person said, Tucker is crazy. I concur. But like I said, I don't even think the weird spanking sexual undertones were actually the most concerning part about this somehow. In fact, it was the larger point that he was making. The American president is not our daddy. He is not there to discipline us. He is there to do our bidding or she. They are there as our employee. They are there to protect our fundamental rights, not to dictate our behavior. 
Mary Catherine Ham on Twitter quote tweeted the Tucker Carlson clip and said, I am a grown person and I have a father and a mother and a God. I do not need whatever this is from some politician. There has been so much big government authoritarian weird stuff said over the past couple of months in our political system, but this might take the cake. We don't need the government or the president to be our father or our mother. We actually just need it to get out of our lives entirely. All right, guys, I hope you liked this episode. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to my channel if you've not already, and if you want even more content, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok.